NASA finds water on the surface of the moon. I'm Tanya Hall, and joining me is Dr. Casey Honeyball, NASA Postdoctoral Program Fellow at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. Welcome, Casey. Hi, welcome, or thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You've been talking to people all day long. In fact, you just <laughs> left a NASA press briefing where you and your colleagues announced a pretty exciting discovery on the surface of the moon. Fill us in, please. Yeah, so using the Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, SOFIA, which is an airborne uh, telescope flying on a Boeing 747, we made the first detection of molecular water on the sunlit moon in high southern latitudes at the Clavius Crater. The Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, or SOFIA, played a new and pretty important role in this discovery. What kind of instrument is this? And how did SOFIA accomplish what other instruments and methods could not? So what is interesting is that SOFIA is an infrared telescope that operates at about 45,000 feet in the atmosphere. So it's above 99% of the Earth's atmospheric water vapor. Um, this allowed us to look for a six micron fingerprint uh, in the infrared that is strictly due to molecular water. Uh, previously, from 2009, spacecraft that looked at hydration on the moon used, used a 3 micron absorption band, but this 3 micron band is due to either molecular water or hydroxyl, and the two cannot be separating, use, separated using 3 microns. So SOFIA provided a unique uh, infrared platform for us to look for a new spectral fingerprint due to only water. This finding was actually the result of a test of SOFIA, correct? That's correct. Uh, prior to these observations, we weren't sure that SOFIA could look at the moon or if the moon would be so bright that it would saturate the detector. So we had applied for time to do this test and they granted us time and it turned out to be an amazing discovery. So approximately how much water is there and what questions does this discovery raise about how it formed or even arrived there? So there's about 100 to 400 ppm of water present on the surface of the moon in the Clavius region. Uh, we equate this to roughly a 12 ounce bottle of water in a cubic meter of soil, but not at volume spread across the surface of the moon because we only see a couple of grains deep. Um, what this has told us though is that our observations were during about 2.30 p.m. on the sunlit surface of the moon. And so the moon was pretty warm during our observations. And models suggested that the abundance of water present on the moon at our latitude and time of day for the moon, the water that would be on the surface of the grains could not exist. It would be very, very low. And so what that meant is that because we're seeing hundreds of ppm of water, the water must be stored somehow. And so we have the idea that it's stored with inside impact glasses generated from micrometeorites. How is the water persistent? You mentioned it was warm. How, why does it boil away? It doesn't boil away because these impact glasses are sheltering it from a harsh lunar environment. So instead of it being uh, like this is a grain, it's attached to a grain surface, the water is actually incorporated into the structure of a glass, kind of like it's dissolved inside of a glass. You mentioned that the water may have come from hydroxyl. What is that and where might that have come from? So hydroxyl is formed on the surface of the moon from constant solar wind in, um, implantation of hydrogen. And this hydrogen reacts with oxygen in the soil to create hydroxyl, which is just OH. Uh, water could form from micrometeorites impacting the moon and taking this pre-existing hydroxyl, taking two molecules and combining them to create one molecular water molecule, which is then stored into these glasses. Explain the multidisciplinary approach that NASA took on this discovery. So uh, this approach is a combination of astronomy and observational astronomy, uh, planetary science, and uh, also, a little bit of lab work went into this, too, because we were like, well, uh, lunar soils show a six micron band. So if from terrestrial water, of course, because they're contaminated with it. But that showed us that if the lunar surface had molecular water, then these three me these, these methods should show us molecular water on the sunlit surface of the moon with SOFIA. Casey Honeyball. NASA Postdoctoral Program Fellow, NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. 
if somebody wants to connect with you, Casey, maybe they want to find out more about this discovery, how can they do that? Uh, I can be reached by email at casey.i.honeyball at nasa.gov. Sounds good. Thanks for taking some time out to explain this new announcement. Thank you. And find more of my interviews right here or at tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching. Thank you.